Welcome to an SFB Addict video. SFB Addict here. I had a request to do a video on drones and drone tactics. And, well, basically you launch them aboard, send them towards your enemy. And there are six types of drones. End of video. Have a good day. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, when have you ever known SFB to be that simple? Well, there are indeed uh, six types of drones and they basically change over time. Let me just bring up a little uh, timeline of drones. So basically year 65, that's how uh, SFB does its years from year 0 to year 180 or 200, etc. They start out with Type 1 drones. And what a Type 1 drone is... It is a Speed 8 drone, lasts for 3 turns, which means 24 axes, and has a warhead strength of 6. And then eventually, year 77, you get Type 2 drones. Well, what type 2 drone is, is it is speed 12 with a 6 point warhead. And then year 83 you get type 3 drones. Yeah, well, a type 3 drone is a strength 6 warhead. It's speed 12, but it lasts a whopping 25 turns, or 300 hexes. And then you get some uh, changes in the restrictions on the drones because you've got uh, restricted, which means you can only have a very small percentage. You've got limited, which means you can have a slightly larger percentage. And then you get general availability, which means all of the drones on your ship can be of that type. So through the years, your percentages, uh, the restrictions change. And then we... Uh, get up eventually and start getting Type 4 and Type 5 drones. Well, what is a Type 5 drone? Well, a Type 5 drone, it's right here at the bottom, is essentially a 12-point warhead, two-space drone. And then a Type 4 is the same thing again, it is a two-space drone, 12-point warhead. Uh, but the years are, are, are different for their availability kind of thing. And we'll see what that is in a minute. So basically you got Type 1, which are Speed 8, then you go to Type 2, which are Speed 12. And then you go to Type 3, which are Extended Range. And Type 5 are basically double-spaced Type 2 drones. And then Type 4 are double-spaced Type 1 drones. And then uh, you get uh, Type 6 drones, which are small little dogfight drones. And they literally only go 12 hexes, but they're launched from fighters, typically at other fighters. And through the years you get uh, different technologies introduced, like ATG is uh, self-guiding drone, basically. You get uh, ECM drones, which generate electronic warfare. You get probe drones, which are used uh, for scientific missions. Um, you get different types of drone racks being introduced. And then eventually you get up to uh, speed 20 drones being introduced. And then you get specialized drones like Stingray, Stonefish, Multi-Warhead, uh, starfish, swordfish, spearfish, multi-warhead, and eventually you get up to speed 32 drones. So if we look at the drone chart here again, you'll see that we have Type 1, Type 1M, Type 1F. And through the years, from year 65 up to year uh, 180, they go from being a warhead of 6 to a warhead of 12. 
and they go from being speed 8 all the way up to speed 32 through the years. And of course, speed uh, type 2 drones, uh, they're speed 12, but then they don't get those speed upgrades because they become obsolete because type 1 M drones are speed 20, which are better than speed 12. So there is no type 2M, there is no type 2F. And the same thing with the type 5 drones. Um, they're speed 12. You don't see a speed 20 and speed 32 because you've got type 4 drones, which are speed 20 and speed 32. So um, type 2 drones are sort of like a fast drone, and type 5 drones are double spaced type 2 drones in a certain time period. And then you, after that, you basically got type 1, type 3, type 4, and type 6. Because 2 and 5 be, are, are obsolete. And then the type 3 drones have a special double X designation, which really increases their range from 25 turns up to 100. So they go from being uh, 300 hexes travel distance up to 1200, and then eventually when speed 32 drone versions are available, up to 3200. And type 3 drones are typically, um, for the most part, only seen on drone cruisers, on drone bombardment missions. Although you can occasionally have a rare Type 3 drone showing up outside of that. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at the notes here that I've got on the side. Um, warhead strengths are halved until you're 25, 125, so they're strength 6 instead of strength 12, strength 12 instead of uh, strength 24. Um, the at symbol is on the Type 3 drones. So that's a special extended double double range, or super extended is what I like to call it. Um, and they come equipped with ATG. And then we have the percentage sign beside some drones. Um, and the percentage basically means there is a special type of ATG applied already. And then we have extended range, which uh, upgrades the distance the drones can travel, and this is something that can be added to any drone. It's not just uh, Type 3s that can, can, can get extended, although the Type 3 drones are a special type of extended because it's double and then double the range again. So if you put extended on a Type 1 drone, you would get 48 hexes of movement instead of 24. Nowhere near the 100 of a Type 3 drone. So those are some quick types of drones. And uh, years ago, in one of their captain's logs, ADB had published uh, a drone sheet that you could photocopy, and this was to uh, quickly fill out what types of drones you're launching and, and track them kind of thing, and designate what type of drones they are, what's in the fore bay, the aft bay, what the target was, and how much damage had been accumulated. Or you could just uh, do check marks kind of thing and do the same thing um, and mark down what the, what counter on the map was representing it, what unit launched it, uh, what drone rack on that unit it came from, what turn and impulse of launch of the drone it was, what the target was, etc. Um, but this looks rather complicated, so I took this idea and I boiled it down for Vassal and came up with the drone cards. And basically, you can click on it and toggle through what type it is. And I wish I could just toggle it from like type 1 to type 2 and then have only your options available for type 2 in the bay show up, but um, Vassal's not that uh, flexible uh, yet, or I'm not enough of a programmer to do it. Um, I'm not a programmer at all. <laughs> uh, so you can quickly select what the type of drone is and then fill in the appropriate information for the forward bay and rear bay. Uh, basically, if your rear bay has got uh, null in it, basically that's a way of saying it's a single space drone. But if you've got something in both the forward bay and the rear bay, that's a way of saying that it's a double space drone. And you've got various types of uh, things that can go in the modules. Armor basically means it takes more damage to kill the drone. ECM generates electronic warfare jamming points. Uh, you get probe drones for scientific missions. Uh, slug is the same thing as armor. It basically takes more points to kill it. 
And then you got things like spearfish, swordfish, uh, stingray, etc. Um, so basically, your your drones go from being just simple explosions or scientific research drones to drones that can generate electronic warfare. And then some drones can actually mount a phaser. Other drones, when they detonate against your shield, will only do like uh, three points of damage, but one of those points will be an internal point of damage. Um, or it'll have a small dogfight drone in the payload instead of an explosive module. Uh, and then a few years later, the Zintis take that that concept and they develop a multi-warhead drone. So instead of having one dogfight drone, it has like three dogfight drones or I think five if it's a double space drone or something like that. Um, and then you've got uh, the ability to add specials to those drones. You can extend their range. You can put external guidance on them, which means they can guide themselves. You can put external armor on them, which will slow them down, but it makes them harder to kill. And it gives you a whole world of possibilities to play with drones. Now, cer certain species have a greater ability to launch more drones than others. For instance, uh, a typical Zinti cruiser will have four drone racks, whereas a Federation cruiser, if it's lucky, may have one drone rack or two. Uh, Klingons will typically have two, where Zindis will have four. Um, and Lyrans, of course, have no drone racks, but they can launch drones from fighters and fighter groups. And then there are races that don't have drones at all. And, of course, the racks that launch these drones also change over the years. So you start out with an A rack, which is a basic four drones that can be launched. And then over time, the, you get... And that those are the only drones that you have are the ones that are in the rack. And then eventually you get reloads so that you can then launch the rack and then put more, more drones into the racks. And then the racks themselves change. You go from being a four rack or a four drone A rack to a six drone B rack, and then to a four drone C rack. But the C rack can launch two drones in one turn. I think it's like 12 impulses apart or something like that. And then you've got, uh, D racks, E racks. Uh, e racks, I think, are ADDs. I do believe D racks are on, on uh, bases. And then you have a special type of rack that only the Klingon has called an F rack, where they replace a shuttle in their shuttle bay with a drone rack that uh, launches the drones through the shuttle bay door. And then you have special racks that only Federation have, which are type G racks, which is a sort of combination of a uh, A rack plus an ADD launcher. Uh, it can also launch dogfight drones instead of the ADD rounds. And then you have Starbase H racks. And of course there is a, a dedicated anti-drone rack, um, which can also launch dogfight drones or shoot slugs of metal, which are what an ADD is. Um, and that's uh, your various types of racks, which also change what's available through the years or what type of species or unit you're flying. And that swamp of choices and possibilities creates basically tactics that you have to uh, use to deploy those weapons and counter those weapons. But the basic purpose of drones is to throw those weapons onto the map as a threat, causing your opponent to change the way it moves or to expend phaser fire defending against those threats. Most drones, like 99% of them, never hit their target. But there are some standard tactics beyond just simply throwing them out. One of the primary tactics is to launch your drone or a wave of drones and then follow them in with your ship so that the opponent has to shoot down the drones, wasting phasers on them, them, yeah, T-H-U-M, on them instead of on you. Or you do the opposite. You bring your ship in first ahead of the drones, and the opponent is either going to shoot you with all of them, having none left for the drones, or they hold some phasers back to try and take the drones out after they deal with you, but your fire may actually damage some of their phasers, 
leaving them without the phasers to actually deal with the drones. And then there is, of course, the option of getting to point-blank range with your ship, only at that point, launching the drones. So your opponent has the least amount of time to deal with the drones and has to decide whether or not they want to shoot you or the drones. That's pretty basic, standard, simple tactics for drones. Now, they can, there can be other tactics you employ. When you start mixing in various types of uh, drones, like you could launch a wave of four drones, and one of those drones could be a swordfish drone, which fires the phaser three. Uh, so you could wait for that drone to get to uh, range one to fire, or you could fire it at range two or three. Uh, so suddenly, if uh, your opponent finds they're being shot with Phaser 3s at range 2, instead of waiting for the drones to get to range 2, they may start firing at range 3 to try and take them down. Uh, you could stick armor on drones, a Phaser drone, in addition, which will slow it down kind of thing. Um, but it's going to get to range 1 and fire a Phaser 3, and your opponent may expend a lot of Phaser fire trying to keep it from getting to that range. And then you throw in things like shuttles that can launch uh, drones of their own, called scatter packs, and suddenly you get waves of drones that the opponent has to deal with. But where drones really shine is in fleet actions, because if you've got four ships launching drones rather than just one, that's a lot more drones. And you can target all those drones on, let's say, one ship in an opponent's fleet, forcing that one ship to either break away from the rest of the fleet or emergency decelerate and, and pop a wild weasel to protect itself from that massive drone wave separating it from the rest of the fleet so that your fleet can either take on that fleet while it's down one ship or you could overrun the ship that's now speed zero with your entire fleet and pummel it while it's uh, going really slow trying to get back up to fleet speed, and the tactics basically multiply from that point outward. Depend it depends on the year, what race you're flying against, what ship you're flying, what the BPV level is, etc. It, it, it changes what you're going to do according to the conditions. But one benefit of drones in terms of BPV is it helps balance certain games where your ship may be a lower BPV than your opponent, and you'll have that difference in BPV that you can spend on special drones. And of course, the drawback to that is that if you're using the victory points calculation uh, for who won or lost the battle, every point that you spend on drones is a commander's um, options point, which calculates into that victory point calculation against you. So the more money you spend on drones, the more victory points you're sort of conceding to your opponent for the purpose of that calculation. Now, of course, regardless of whether or not you are following your drone wave in or it's following you in, one of the uh, tactics, of course, is to launch your wave on one turn, travel to your target, and then when you get point blank, after the, on, the, on turn two, the same turn that your opponent shoots down your first wave of drones, you then overrun with your ship and launch new drones on turn two. Basically doubling the amount of drones that you've put out on the board and maybe after you've passed your opponent you maybe pop out a shuttle scatter pack which will eventually launch six more drones kind of thing. So even if you're just a single ship there are ways of creating a drone wave to sort of multiply your attack ability. But of course your opponent has tactics that they can use of their own to try and counter all of that. Uh, one of the primary ones are dedicated weapons. So some races will have ADDs or anti-drone weapons which shoot slugs of metal that damage nothing else other than drones and shuttles. Uh, some races like the Lyrans have developed an entire system called, called expanding sphere generators which puts up an energy wave to sort of damage drones. And the weapon that every race has is the transporter bomb, a nuclear space mine kind of thing that they transport out 
And after a couple of impulses to become active, and if a drone passes them, it'll detonate and destroy an entire drone wave. Which forces the drone players to then start spacing out their drones so they're not all in one hex, uh, which can bog down the game with moving a lot of counters. And that can turn into a lot, a lot, a lot of counters if you're doing a fleet action. And of course, the, the main primary reason why most people groan <laughs> when drones are launched from a drone user is that the drone user has to do a lot of bookkeeping. They have to track when each drone was launched from, what unit it was launched from, what drone rack it was launched from, how many impulses it's been on the board, what target it is targeted on. And if you're moving a stack of 24 to 36 drones in a fleet action, you need to know all 36 targets of those 36 drones. So it often slows down movement as the drone player uh, consults the records so that they're appropriately moving the drones towards the appropriate targets. Uh, so drones may be fun in certain regards, but they can also be a drag and others. But the primary key thing about uh, using drones is to never become predictable. Uh, some players only ever use Type 1 and Type 4 drones. Uh, it's just a 12-point warhead or a 24-point warhead. It keeps it simple, but it also becomes predictable. So by occasionally throwing in a multi-warhead drone or occasionally throwing in a swordfish drone, um, it keeps things on the bounce, a little bit unpredictable. Uh, and hopefully that plays to your favor so that your opponent never quite knows what you're going to do or what you're going to throw at them. But as I said, most drones never reach their target or get shot down or just run out of fuel. Um, changing your opponent's movement seems to be the primary use of most drone users. Or I should say of most players using drones. So in a way, drones are pretty much a seventh shield. They absorb a lot of phaser fire that your opponent would normally be firing at your ship. They force your opponent to change how, where, and when they move. Hopefully all of that is in your favor as the drone user. So there we go, a 23 minute on drones and a few drone tactics. Uh, so hopefully uh, in the future I'll have more videos on specific drone tactics using specific drones, but that's it for now. Have fun playing Starfleet Battles.